live from Las Vegas, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering IBM Insight 2015, brought to you by IBM. Now your host, Dave Vellante and Paul Gillen. Welcome back to IBM Insight, everybody. This is theCUBE. Go to ibmgo.com for the full digital social experience. We've got a crowd chat running. Uh, well, this is day two of theCUBE at IBM Insight. Alistair Rennie is here. He's the general manager of solutions for IBM Analytics. Alistair, welcome back to theCUBE. Good to see you again. Hey, thank you for having me. It's been we, a we fun last, couple of days. You're welcome. We last talked at uh, your vision event, which was fantastic yeah, down in Orlando. In May. Um, you know, very interesting audience. A lot of the sort of CFO types, but also you guys showcased Watson Analytics. So give us the update. What's, what's new since vision? So, you know, Watson Analytics is moving at an incredible pace. I think it's becoming, you know, one of the most, certainly the fastest growing and one of the most demanded self-service analytics platforms out there. So, we first put Watson Analytics into the marketplace in October, so about a year ago, and there's about 500,000 people, half a million people now, you know, members of Watson Analytics um, doing amazing things. So, incredibly rapid growth. Um, we actually showcased an event in New York last week where we had a whole number of clients join us. And, and what's been fascinating is, kind of like what we hoped would happen, but probably even beyond our, our wildest expectations, is finding people in every kind of different business putting powerful cognitive tools into the hands of their business users, and they're discovering insights in their business that they never, they never knew they had. So we had uh, a client from Point Defiant Zoo talking about you know, how to optimize their, their fan experience and their, their venue experience. We had uh, Zion's Bank Corp up talking about how they were doing risk management between compensation and, and, and banking using Watson Analytics. We had uh, you know, a company that does uh, service contracts around public housing in the UK that we're just sort of every day digesting new information and gaining insights. So it's, it's just going so fast and really putting analytics into everybody's hands. I want to ask you about that because you, you came up with a freemium model for Watson Analytics, put it out there, let anybody uh, uh, play with it. Uh, that was quite a different strategy for IBM and obviously one that was aimed at the business user pull rather than the, than the IT push. What, what's the thinking behind your, your audience for, for Watson Analytics? So, you know, we, we have so many powerful tools for the IT audience, but you know, our observation at the time was that there was an emerging class of, of, of people that needed access to analytics, and we kind of call them the citizen analyst. So if you think about you or anybody else in their everyday business role, how many times a day are you confronted with making a decision where you're kind of left with making a hunch? Um, and, our, and our thesis was, our idea at the time was, if we could put just an entirely different level of consumable tools, kind of powered by cognitive in their hands, um, you know, we could make every business decision better. I, and we wanted to do something you know, pretty bold. We thought that it was really important to make that consumable not only from a technology perspective, which I think Watson Analytics really is, but also just from an access perspective. You know, we didn't want anybody to have a barrier bigger than you know, going to a URL and creating an account and starting. And you know, that has been so important to us, you know, giving analytics to tools to people that never even knew they were available not having to go through complicated process. And now what it's starting to do is give us incredible insight, you know, because we can sort of understand the interactions on the system itself, we're getting all sorts of interesting data about how people are using data that we're using to make the tool better every week. So it's really created this incredible snowball effect. It, it's, it's, you know, one of the most exciting things we've ever done. One of the keys to your title is the word solutions. It's an overused word in our business. What yeah. does solutions mean to you specifically and IBM generally? So we start with the idea that the value of analytics is not so much in the technology, but it's in the business insight. So you know, people, people care about analytics because they want to learn something about their business that they can take an action on and improve something, customer service, profitability, whatever it happens to be. So we kind of take a couple of different perspectives on solutions. So one is clearly how do we put just a new generation of tools into the hands of every business user, Watson Analytics. Um, and people are discovering, when we talk to clients using Watson Analytics or, or just people using it, um, you know, they don't come up and tell us that you know, they think it's the coolest technology in the world. They come up and they, like, they're rabid. They, they talk about um, profitability they never knew they had or safety and, and regulatory concerns that they can now solve in a different way. So they come and talk to us about business outcome. So that certainly, I think, fits solutions. The, the other part of solutions that we're doing, we made some announcements this week at Vision on is, 
thinking about insights very deeply in a vertical industry context. So what do analytics mean in retail banking, in merchandising, in retail, in industrial? And starting not so much from the technology, but what does it mean for a retailer to understand their, their mix of products or to understand segmentation and, and building truly repeatable solutions that we can deliver you know, in, in very uh, consumable ways to, to industry roles, to CMOs, to CFOs, to CSOs, and, and thinking about it that way. So, so consumability is you know, this long tail of every business user, but also deep thinking about you know, vertical insights. I so want to traditionally, uh, if I could follow up on that, traditionally IBM would, would approach that problem with the heavy services layer. Mm -hmm. Uh, are, are you, I'm inferring from what you said that you, re repeatability, you're able to extract that industry knowledge and put it into software so that it's going to scale, I can consume it as a, as a customer much more rapidly and probably more cost effectively and scale it across my organization. So, so you've said it very well. I mean, you know, we have, I think, a tremendous advantage in that we've done more than 50, 55,000 consulting engagements, so we have a pretty good sense of where analytic value can be found by industry. And, and certainly we do tremendous amounts of transformational engagements with clients. But there's also, I think, a really untapped market for exactly what you just said, where you know, people want to take that expertise, they want to get it captured in software, and in fact, mostly software as a service, so they can consume it from the cloud. Um, and they want to get to value in days and weeks as opposed to a longer term transformation project, and get the insight, take the action, and then you know, repeat and do more. So for us, it is, it's exactly that. How do we put together you know, access to data, predictive models, the right way to communicate through visualizations with business users, and really treat that like a software as a service product that people you know, essentially subscribe to and that we keep, we keep improving every week. And that runs as a sort of option on, on SoftLayer, is that right? It's sort of a a well, service that I can acquire through software, or do you also run on other clouds? Maybe well, certainly, you know, SoftLayer is a key piece of infrastructure. Many of the services we're using to compose these solutions are available as APIs through Bluemix. So we, uh -huh. you know, we use mate, you know, uh, analytic services or data cleansing services. So Bluemix for composability, and ultimately consumed by our customers as a integrated service that's that's really tailored to their to their um, to their business problem. However, they want to deploy it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we certainly do on-prem and cloud. I think over time it's going to be mostly be cloud because mm. people are looking for the fewest possible mm. barriers to entry. Most of these folks you know, don't have IT teams or don't have large IT teams, don't build up data science. So they, they simply want to consume outcome. And you know, when you put a vertical lens on that, um, you can really accelerate time to them having the insights they need. After seeing what Watson did on Jeopardy, I think people tend to anthropomorphize technology sometimes, and they think that, well, this is a this is a general purpose solution for anything. So, to turn the question around a little bit, what is Watson not good at? Well, so I think you know the the, the win on Jeopardy was I think pretty iconic, right? It, you know, but but at the time, Watson was four or five technologies and really one service, if you will. It was sort of open domain Q and A, and I think that you know really you know stunned people what was possible. What, what's happened over time is Watson is now a collection of about 30 different technologies and, and you know, come out as 30 different sort of APIs or services that people can use. So what we've done with Watson is you know, really decompose it into services, so some of them are around Q&A, but some of them you saw yesterday in the keynote are around processing image, dealing with unstructured language, um, different kind of machine learning algorithms. So, so Watson really isn't necessarily one thing, it's this now collection of APIs. And you know, we're going to focus on that core technology base. We'll integrate them into our own vertical solutions. But there's plenty of things that you know, Watson uh, doesn't do yet. And that's why putting those APIs into the Watson developer cloud um, and making them accessible to you know, hundreds and thousands of developer partners is, is sparking, I think, a new golden age in cognitive app development. We saw some of them yesterday with, with travel uh, and with uh, you know, wine for me and some others. So, you know, there's, there's a tremendous amount we'll do on the core cognitive technology around you know, unstructured data, reasoning, learning, but making them available as services so that this whole ecosystem of developers can flourish is part of how we get Watson into you know, all sorts of different places. Well, uh, so now Bob Picciano pretty much scotched the, uh, the, the question about, uh, about whether the, uh, IBM would ever open source Watson, but what you're talking about is is, is developing the core engine through communities of developers. Uh, do you have anything in place to kind of crowdsource Watson, make Watson 
improve Watson's cognitive capabilities through the crowd? Well, what, what we're trying to do is, um, I think in a much more contemporary way, rather than sort of saying open source Watson, what we're trying to do is take the Watson services, and we are doing it through the Watson Developer Cloud, and make those services available to just a huge range of uh, developers. And, and what we get out of that, to your point, you know, when you start opening them up to a large set of developers, we learn new use cases, we learn how they want the services improved, we're learning how they're consuming them, people will create their own services out of services, so you get this big network effect around cognitive that I think is, is pretty exciting. So, the question that Paul and I were talking about is, who do you sell to? Right, I mean, you mentioned developers, obviously that's a lever. Yep. Who else, I mean, it's the CIO, is it the CMO, is it, how, talk about the roles so, that are influencing you know, When we think about sort of analytics right now, I mean, certainly, you know, we do all sorts of tremendous work with the IT organization, and you know, many of the, you know, the very best ones in the world are here, and they're talking, if you hear them talking, you know, their agenda is, you know, how, how do they make data accessible? How do they build a culture of analytics? How do they you know, help people you know, really unlock all that data and move to more modern infrastructure things? Things like Spark and other tools to get to you know, all the dark data. So that's clearly somebody who we sell to. Um, some of the other things I mentioned though are really, I think, important new audiences. Um, you know, we sell to CMOs in terms of how they think about customer experience or fan experience. Um, we sell to CFOs on how they think about a dynamic, um, you know, analytic-driven uh, planning process or risk management process. You know, we sell to retail organizations and they, you know, they care certainly about analytics, but they care about it in terms of you know, the things that change how they work in their stores. I mean, Urban Outfitters, for example, is doing a keynote here and they're using analytics to understand what are the real, uh, what are the products inside their stores that you know, punch above their weight. Um, and they talked about the fact that they carry vinyl records, you know, and while vinyl records only, you know, does a small amount of revenue, it's actually responsible for, you know, a whole set of other merchandise. <laughs> that they can now understand deeply and change the way they merchandise. So, it's kind of every business. But the, these are constituents that are not traditional IBM constituencies. No. So how, how, are, how are you changing the organization? Or maybe it's through working with partners. How, how are you changing the organization for your sales force yeah. to better understand the, these no. people and their needs? Well, I mean, you're right. So uh, part of it is offerings that are just entirely more consumable by a business person. So when we talk about these industry solutions, you know, we tend to talk about them very much in the, the language and the, the, the value points of you know, really specific industry roles. So some of the things we do, one of my favorite ones we do in industrial is uh, predictive maintenance for automotive robotics. I mean, it's an incredibly specific discussion and you go talk to people that run that part of the world yeah. or retail lift. So consumability of the offerings, I think, is an area we've just, I think, set a new bar. Uh, our sales teams are more and more uh, aligned to have a sort of a consultative discussion at the business level. You know, they have expertise by industry, they have expertise in certain analytic domains, maybe it's customer analytics or risk analytics, and they can help the customer through application of the tools to their business problem, not just the, the IT infrastructure itself. And then, you know, lastly, uh, many of them are here. We have a tremendous set of partners that have, you know, very deep vertical expertise, and, you know, we're giving them just a whole new set of tools to go work with. Talk about, um your specific business, help us frame that. Like, what does it comprise? So, you know, as part of the whole analytics group, you know, I think my team's got a pretty fun job. So, my colleagues are doing amazing work around, you know, open data platforms, cloud data services, um, and to my team, that's all, you know, real capability to consume. I've got the solutions unit, and we've taken a pretty strong point of view that, you know, we're really about making analytics consumable in the context of the business roles that people have. So when we think about you know, how to progress what we're doing, certainly we all like technology, but we, we, we try to think really hard about you know, how can we put that together into a insight that matters to a business person in their role and then put the solutions around that. Um, so we have all the platform tools to pick from, but we've built out pretty deep industry expertise. And we also then you know, can bring in you know, kind of the secret weapons. How do we start to you know, add to those solutions data that our clients don't have with some of the cloud insight services we announced this week to bring in things like Twitter, weather, and other data, curate that and put it into an industry context. So we're really all about, you know, how do we help people apply all this technology to rapid business outcomes? So you're the master chefs. Absolutely. <laughs> it's top chef every day. <laughs> you've got a lot of products. You've got a lot of point products that you've, that you've acquired, that you've built over the years, some 25 acquisitions I believe I read. Uh, is that a problem at some point that there are so many different brands you have in the analytics market? Are you trying to harmonize those in some way or are you 
comfortable having point solutions. I, I, I think all of those point solutions come with, you know, come with a client value. So, you know, from that perspective, you know, every one of those uh, companies that we brought into IBM had a really specific reason to be here and a very powerful kind of, uh, you know, role to play. So, I don't think it's a particular problem. I think what we are seeing though, especially as we start to decompose things into APIs and we start to make things more consumable, you know, what we have now is, you know, a whole set of organic innovation we can do around those assets to deliver some of these solutions. So, you know, when we think about, I'll, I'll pick on one, you know, we're doing fan insight. Uh, you know, how do, how do we help a sports franchise get better insight into what's going on in their stadium? So the fact that we can, you know, understand, you know, how to work with commerce systems, how to work with financial planning systems, it, it just gives us, I, I think, a, a much richer set of ingredients to work with as we distill business value. But for value. Your, your sales force, it has to be a challenge though, right? Because they have to know where each of these pieces fits, and when you have an in, a, a yeah. solution like that, that may involve several different products. Well, well, what we do around that though is we take a customer point of view. So, back to this whole point of solution. Um, you know, we don't try to, you know, expose all the parts of the car. You know, our job is to put that solution together and show people, you know, what they can do from a driving perspective. To I won't take that analogy too far, but you know, we we pre-integrate that. So more and more, what we're doing is taking a vertical lens, a specific business problem, and then building solutions for that. So the conversation with the client isn't about, you know, all the pieces of technology that come to bear. It's about what problem we're solving for them, and that that simplifies everything. So what's with the uh, red sweater that you brought well, here? Well, you know, uh, so, so uh, I was pretty proud of this. You know, as you I know, was up at the Hockey Hall of Fame uh, earlier so this year. So there's nothing better. Yeah. So we had our keynote uh -huh. this morning, and uh, you know, I mentioned uh, doing Fan Insight. So we worked with the Ottawa Senators, uh, you know, pretty fabulous hockey team, and you know, we helped them uh, with uh, a solution around Fan Insight. So you know, they were nice enough to kind of give me this jersey and. Um, you know, that's a pretty pretty special Name number for, for hockey see that? fans. Yeah, so Andrew, that's, can that's we see that? Cool. Just, uh, that's pretty cool. Hold yeah. it right up in front of you. There you go. Yeah, Make there sure it's the right, right place. So that's uh, <laughs> pretty fun for the Ottawa Senators. That's pretty cool. But but what was really cool was uh, Peter O'Leary, their, their CMO, their uh, marketing lead, was talking about, you know, if you think about a sports franchise now, you know, the way they apply analytics is around, you know, who, who is in their audience? Who's, you know, who do they know, who don't they know, how do they get to know them? Um, he used a word I'd never heard called fan avidity, which uh, you know, fan avidity, fan avidity, right? Uh, so what I was how avid like, are they? How avid are they? And of course, you know that goes. You know, the Senators had a tremendous finish last year, so they had this incredible energy in their fan base, which presents you know very specific opportunities for marketing and promotion. But through the course of a you know a long season like hockey or MLB or something like that, you know, fan avidity can change. And the marketing organizations need to be able to, you know, pretty dynamically change their tacts and, you know, how they speak to their audience and adjust merchandise and all these things that, that become part of it. So, you know, the Ottawa Senators have become a, a great partner in becoming an insight-driven business. Great city of Ottawa. Can, can, can Watson help us figure out what's wrong with my Bruins? Is that, can, can you help us solve that? <laughs> Is that we can, we can try, but I'm working on the Blue Jays first. I think it's because the Cognos business is based in Ottawa, right? <laughs> Well, we got a tremendous. Uh, we have a tremendous uh, team in Ottawa that's, you know, working on Cognos. They're also, you know, a pretty important part of what we're doing with Watson Analytics. So yeah, there's maybe a little hometown bias, but I think, but I think, no discounts. But I think, uh, <laughs> but I think we won that business on our merit. I mean, they, you know, they they looked at a number of people, and I think we won because we were more consumable. Excellent, Alistair. Thanks very much for coming back in the queue. Really, a hey, pleasure anytime. It's again. a real pleasure. All right. Keep right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest right after this. Check out ibmgo.com for the full digital social experience at IBM Insight. It's a cube, right? Be right back. <laughs>